don't want to just give our attention to the kids who misbehave. We want to catch those students who are here. The student behavior we important, probably the most important component of good behavior management is catching the kids being good. Now how is this done? I've seen a number of different techniques. One of them, a teacher spells out an activity on the board. Let's show you how this is done. Our students are behaving very well. And they know that I'm going to spell out some activity on the board. When I am finished spelling it out, they've earned that activity. So the kids behave, and I put a P up there on the board. And the kids want to behave because they want to see what the second letter is. After they behave for five minutes, half an hour, one period, the whole day, whatever your interval is, you put up another letter. Now the kids are whispering. It's popcorn. It's pop. They want to see what it is. They're going to behave again. You spell it out. They go, all right, we've got pop at the end of the period. But you've got to maybe have to troubleshoot then, maybe use your consequences, make a few warnings. But when you finally have them behaving for a while again, you put up another letter. Oh no, we're not done yet. So it could be popcorn, party, on Friday with Mr. Smith after two o'clock. You can keep spelling it out for as long as you want and the kids never know when they've earned it. So they continually behave, continue to behave so that they can get to the end of that and find out what they've earned. In high school, I saw a teacher use a stopwatch. There's 58 minute periods. The teacher pulled out a stopwatch first day and said, we need to get work done in here. I expect 50 minutes of good work during this 58 minute period. When this stopwatch says that we've had 50 minutes of work, positive interaction, good work during my class, you'll have the other eight minutes to talk quietly, study, prepare for your next class. And I'll start the stopwatch. If a couple of kids start talking in the back of the classroom, click it off. Imagine the peer pressure. These kids turn around, they tell those kids to be quiet. When they are, put the stopwatch on again. That way you're sure of getting 50 good minutes of work out of those kids. I noticed that my kids were very interested in basketball. And what I would do was I would give out tickets to them. I would cut up pieces of paper and I would go around, and if they were on time, they would get two tickets. They answered a question, they get another ticket, and I would walk around my classroom just catching kids being good. And I could hand out as many tickets as I wanted. I didn't have to because at the end of the period, somebody was going to win something. And I could give out as many tickets as I wanted, and they were still, I was still only going to give away that one reward at the end of the period. And some kids would get 30 of these tickets, another kid would get 10 of these tickets. One student would keep misbehaving, he wouldn't have any until the end of the period He'd behave, he'd answer a question, he'd say something polite, and I'd give him a ticket. There was always a reason to behave. There was always a chance of winning. Even though you only had one ticket, you still had a chance of winning. At the end of the period, with about two minutes left, the students would come up, they would drop their tickets off in a box. I would reach in, they all had their names on here, or their nicknames, or their initials. I'd pull it out and I'd say, Terrence, you're shot. What I meant by your shot was that I had a Nerf ball hoop on the wall. It's a shot. He misses. I had the foul line far enough back that very few kids ever made the shot. If they did make that shot, they had no homework that evening. They could win a quarter. It was something very small. Some of you are saying, but he bribed his kids. No, bribing is when you pay someone to misbehave, to show the wrong behavior. Yes, I did give out a few quarters a week, but it was worth it to me to have a class where good positive learning was going. Everything making sense to me? Good, good. Everything making sense? Why did I give it to you? If you ask for one, I guarantee you won't get one. What do you need to do to get a ticket? Lance, what do you need to do? Hey, not bad. Start reading right there. Okay. I'll be asking you a question about that age in just a second. Okay. Now, Thomas Jefferson was there at the Constitutional Convention, and he had a bunch of the way of input there. Yeah. Gotcha? 
No. Now, he was the main writer of the Declaration of Independence, but he wasn't the main writer of the Constitution? Yes, no? Yeah. No, you're right. He was not the main writer of the Constitution. Uh, where did they write the Constitution? What place? What city? I think I'll give one. Everyone's got their hand raised. And... Actually, Nicole, where was it? Uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yeah. yeah, in the winter, right? No, in the summer. In the summer. <laughs> now, it got pretty hot there. They also... Uh, why'd they close the windows? Yes, sir. So any news of it wouldn't be done. Right, didn't want the news of what was happening to leak out. Okay, I see we're... Uh, we got a few minutes left. Let me come around and collect your tickets. Be sure you've got your name or your initials on them. Wrap them in. She get what she wins when she shoot, if she makes a basket. Uh, three to the game. That's right. I think for her to win a basketball game this Friday. Okay. Is that what you'd like? Let's, uh, let's fold it up. It's about time to go. Hold up your books. When the bell rings, you are dismissed. Good class today. A variation on this was a teacher who had a fishbowl. At the end of the period, she would go around and allow the students to pick a ticket out of her box that had, usually most of them had on them, thank you for being good today. I appreciate your fine behavior. Good having you in class. But on one or two of these tickets in here, it said, no homework tonight. And she would go around to the students who behaved during that period and allow them to pick out a ticket. There was a chance they wouldn't have to do homework that evening. That was a motivating technique for the kids. And of course, it's important not to forget to touch the kids, to smile, to let them know when they behave as you expected them to do. At the beginning of the year, I sort of bump into my kids a little bit or just touch them lightly because they don't know me too well. By the end of the year, I'm leaning over their shoulder. I've got my arm around them as I'm helping them. We're getting up close and personal. It's a very positive interaction. Do a lot of smiling. Do a lot of thank yous. Use a little bit of humor, too. I'll say, hey, Mr. Mac, what's up? And I'll say, the sky. You know, what's up? The opposite of down. What's new? Babies. What's happening? You are, man. You are. And we laugh. We have a good time. Um, we were discussing dances one time, dances throughout the years, and we were talking about how it went from the black bottom and how we moved up into the 60s with the twist, and there was one dance called the Funky Chick, and he said, how'd the Funky Chicken go, Mr. Mac? So I did my imitation like this, which they thought was hilarious. I use that now as the motivating factor. Hey, Mr. Mac, show us the Funky Chicken. Well, they've got to work that whole period and show me some good behavior, and then, yeah, I'm a nut, but I'm their nut. Okay? I do the funky chicken for them at the end of the classroom. I won't do it on tape here, however. Okay. And uh, lastly, important to be consistent. We've got to react to all misbehavior. The students have to know what's acceptable in the classroom, what the limitations are. And it is important to have those consequences for actions. When you are administering consequences, don't show your emotions. Okay. That, might, that might work in elementary school. If you act mad once in a while, the kids say, wow, we've really got her angry, and they do behave. In high school, they know they've gotten your goat. They know that they've gotten to you. When you administer a consequence, do it calmly. Go through your list of consequences. If the student is out of control, you'll finally reach the last consequence, which is to send them from the room down to the office. And your administrator knows that you weren't just winging it. You just didn't have a bad day. That student had four, five, six chances to control their behavior before they went down to the office. In summary, behavior management is very important to you as a teacher. It allows us to teach. It allows our students to learn in a positive, controlled environment. And you become known as a teacher who is firm, friendly, and fair. You develop a reputation within that school as being a good teacher among your colleagues and among your kids. Best of luck. We'll see you in the hallways.